um, a better presentation. So Stephanie, I know you've started the recording. Can you tell me how many people that you see that have joined thus far? Um, nine so far. Okay. Twelve. Sixteen. Twenty-three, twenty-four. The number is just climbing. Yeah, that's great. It's great for all of us. Well, I see it's two o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the dot. We will wait for a couple minutes to allow people that may be finishing up um, other calls that they may be having out of respect, and then we'll get started. And Stephanie, being that I'm sharing my screen, I don't want to, um, you know, happy clicky. So I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'll want you to give me some updates. I do say, see that we have 29 participants thus far, according to the top of my screen. Yes. We actually had 93 people sign up. So that's why I want to out of respect, just allow people a couple minutes to be able to join. And we're going to have a great presentation today about human resources and how it can help not only you as a uh, partner, potential partner, or a student, and how human resources can make a difference in your life, because we got some great presenters today. And I am watching the numbers, Stephanie, just so you know. And I saw that we had quite the audience from not only um, you know different schools, we had uh, an audience from organizations and things. And this is your time, obviously at no charge to you, to be able to talk to and ask questions about human resources, um, the certification program, and how it can help you as a person, help you as a school, help you as an organization because we are living in some very trying times right now. And I don't know about you, but uh, utilizing the resources of a human resources professional during COVID has greatly helped me because I'm not a human resources professional. I'm not, but I've had to reach out and gain some information about that. And I know we're just chit-chatting right now Anybody else have, is there anybody else that's had some, let's just say trying times that you have to deal with human resources issues during COVID. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to fill some time here. And that, 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 that's okay. I can tell you that I have and you may or may not have, but it is 2.03, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, my name is Betty Gardner. I'm the CEO of ProTrain, and I'm very privileged to be here today with our guest, and we're going to be talking about human resource certification programs, and we all know that especially uh, literally, especially during COVID, we need to make sure that we're taking care of our employees the right way and uh, doing it, uh, let's say, the legal way. We have to make sure that we are uh, talking to our employees, respecting our employees, and making sure that our employees know the rules and the regulations of the organization that they work with and you as their leader need to know how you're supposed to take care of them. And I would, I would assume the majority of our population today is either a community college or university. 
and it's really important that we that we understand the um, ramifications of how we talk to an employee, how we respect them, how we provide them new information, whether it be FERPA, whether it be during you know about COVID, et cetera. We have to do that because we are held legally responsible for how we take care of people. And that's part of what we're going to talk about today is why offering a human resources certification program is important and what it means not only for the employee, but for the employer. And I need to get rid of that and get back there. And I apologize. Let me go to previous. <clears throat> okay. Our agenda today is we're going to talk about who are we? Who are you? Who are we? And why do we have a common interest together? We're going to talk about the human resources um, certification overview. And why would you offer human resources certification preparation courses? Who do you offer them to? And I can tell you between our HR um, individuals that's on the call and ProTrain and who we're offering them to and our partners and potential partners, I want us all to engage in conversation as to how it's gonna help all of us and what the benefit will be. And what's the outlook for a person that's interested in human resources? Human Resources Professional Certification. Which HR certification course should you offer? And why should you offer one versus another to a student? What are the benefits? And um, then we're gonna talk about, we're all living in COVID. Uh, ProTrain, as well as many of you, have been offering in-classroom instructor-led and they've been going great. Well, that's sort of not happening right now. And I can tell you for since March of last year, ProTrain has had great success in offering live online instructor-led synchronous programs in addition to our online self-paced programs. And we've been having great success with students as well as employers that are wanting to get people trained. And we'll talk about the benefits of live online learning. And what are the pro-trained student requirements? I mean, just like you as a potential school partner or an existing school partner, there are things that people have to do. There are expectations, there are prerequisites. And we have to have our students understand those up front. And we're going to do, we're going to hold our questions and the answers to the end. So if you do have a question, please make a note so at the end, or you can put in the chat session and I'll keep track of it and we'll answer them all at the end of this presentation because human resources, I mean, just like human resources, project management, we got IT. These are some of the top things that people nationwide are looking for. And so we wanna answer your questions. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, prior to starting ProTrain in 2004, I was the Director of Continuing Education in the computer training area at North Carolina State University. Prior to that, I was a programmer and I just decided that my passion in life is to try to help people further themselves through education to employment. And that's why ProTrain was born. And we work with approximately 250 schools right now. And we have over 500 uh, online self-paced programs. 
we have tons of live instructor-led synchronous programs and you know, when our world comes back to where we can be normal we'll go back to in-classroom training so we work with great people like laura and her um, organization to offer um, exam prep programs we work with with her organization we work with many organizations to offer exam prep programs and we work with you as our institutions of higher learning to try to help you take a little bit of load off your weight because you know, we consider ourselves as an extension arm of who you are to try to be there for you and to help assist your students, your employees, and try together, together to make sure that we can just make it work and we've been very successful with that so laura i would like to turn it over to you so you can talk about your great organization and how you know we work together with you because it is all about it's about working together so laura i will turn it to you thank you betty uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be with you and and with these great people. Uh, I have uh, two of our staff with us today. Uh, Terry Varnell is our um, chief operations officer, and Troy handles our um, our marketing and business development. I, I'd like to start by uh, providing a little bit of a background about me because it helps set the stage for how um, HR certification programs could be helpful to your uh, organizations, to your schools, colleges, universities. Um, if you could go to the next slide, Betty. Yes, um, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, many years ago, I earned a bachelor's degree in psychology. I have learned that it's like having a degree in unemployment. It qualified me to do absolutely nothing. Now, don't get me wrong, my college experience was fabulous. I had great courses and great professors. It was very enriching personally, but I graduated with really no marketable skills. Unfortunately, that's not unique to me or to my major. 43% uh, of recent college graduates are underemployed. That uh, means that they have a job that doesn't require their degree another term for overqualified. So it's true that under just because somebody's underemployed, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're starving. Uh, many of them have well-paying jobs, but many of these people are actually working at Starbucks or in retail while they're waiting for job offers to come that are relevant to their field. After five years, 28% of college graduates are still underemployed. And in my particular major, it's even worse, uh, psychology graduates, 54% are under, underemployed shortly after graduation. And after five years, 38% are still underemployed. So I wasn't going to let that happen to me. So Betty, if you'll go to the next slide, this represents that I went on to earn a master's degree. Uh, my degree is in organizational behavior. It was a great program. It was more focused, more narrow than my undergraduate degree. There was a lot of organizational theory and group dynamics and a lot of other stuff that I don't really remember. Um, upon earning this degree though, what could I actually do? One of my professors, David Charrington, who is a nationally, even internationally recognized expert in human resource management, uh, taught our HR class. And I really liked it because it was practical. I learned how to do things. And that really appealed to me. Uh, David Sherrington was at that time serving on the, the board of directors of the Human Resource Certification Institute. So he recognized the value of, of obtaining a human resource certification credential. And he encouraged the students uh, that were interested in, a, in a, a career in human resources to obtain this certification. So Betty, the next slide, please. 
So I earned my PHR certification. This is Professional in Human Resources. It provided me with evidence of a marketable skill. Next slide, please. The Human Resource Certification Institute has over the past more than 40 years certified more than a half a million HR professionals. They have three main certifications for people practicing in the United States. Uh, the PHR, the one in the middle, is the one that I obtained as a recent uh, graduate of my graduate program. And the one on the right, the SPHR, is the one that I obtained not long after that, the Senior Professional in Human Resources, and that's the certification that I continue to hold. The a APHR is a newer certification for them, and it's a certification that individuals who are just starting out in HR or are interested in pivoting into a career in HR can obtain. It doesn't have the same requirements for experience and education that the other two certifications require. Now, human resource certification is not a required certification to hold a job in the field the same way that law or some jobs in accounting are. But it's, but it's still a very valuable certification for HR professionals because it demonstrates that they have a commitment to their field. It proves that they have current knowledge in the field because the certification has to be updated every three years. And it helps to differentiate themselves from other job candidates. I'd like to just introduce you to some fictional people who uh, are examples of, the, of, of how HR certification might benefit someone in their career and how they would benefit from being able to enroll in an HR certification preparation class. This is Abby. She's a, an administrative assistant who uh, joined a small startup company. And as an administrative assistant, she was assigned to take care of all of the HR functions because there was not an HR manager in the company. As the company grows, her responsibilities have also grown and she would like to take on managerial responsibilities. But because she doesn't have a degree, she's worried that she's gonna be overlooked. So she could obtain the APHR certification and that would be evidence that, that she has the, the knowledge necessary to be able to work in that field. Uh, so a course in helping pr her prepare for the APHR would be very helpful for her. This next slide is Josh. He's a general business manager. He has a bachelor's degree in business. The company that he works for has faced a costly lawsuit because one of their supervisors fired an employee when she became pregnant. The company is concerned about this. They don't want anything like that to happen again. So they've asked all of their managers to improve their knowledge of human resources law, and they would like them to hold a credential that proves that. The company pays for prep classes and the exam fee for 12 of their managers. So Josh, Josh is going to enroll in an APHR preparation program so that he can get his APHR certification. Our next person is Brooke. She's an HR manager. She loves her job, but she feels that top management doesn't really give her the respect that she deserves. She wants to prove her competence by passing an HR certification exam. She wants to take either the PHR or SPHR exam but she feels like she needs a course to help her make sure that she knows everything that she needs to know to pass the exam. This next slide is Adam. He's a line manager in a manufacturing company. And as such, he's been involved in, in a lot of HR functions. He's found that he really likes HR and he would like to pivot his career into the HR field but because he doesn't have any real experience and he doesn't have an education in, in the field, it, that's a bit of a stumbling block for him. But if he certifies with the APHR, that can prove that he has knowledge in the field and he'll be qualified to be able to get a job in HR. So he, he too would be interested in a preparation course. This is Macy. She's a recruiting manager with her company but she'd like to be considered for a promotion as an HR generalist. So she needs to prove that she knows more than just recruiting. 
getting the PHR certification, which should be qualified for, is something that would be a step in the right direction, but should need to enroll in a course to prepare for that exam. Next, we have Megan. Megan's a student. She's going to complete her degree in sociology, which is you know, the, the unemployment equivalent of sociology or psychology in a few months. Uh, she plans to go to graduate school, but that's not really a possibility for her financially right now. She's going to need to work for a while. Uh, she'd like to get a job in HR, uh, but she needs to have a way that to set herself apart from other job candidates. And so the APHR is something that would val be valuable to her as a recent graduate. Uh, so she's going to take the APHR exam and needs to have a course that will help her prepare for that. And finally, we have Matthew. He's an HR director with a lot of experience, but his company is being acquired by another entity. Many of the positions in these combined companies will be redundant. And so some people are going to be laid off. Matthew wants to beef up his resume so that he'll be able to compete for a position in the acquiring company. Or if he, if he isn't retained, he'd like to beef up his resume so that it'll make it easier for him to find a new job elsewhere. He qualifies for and plans to take the SPHR exam, but he needs a good preparation course that'll prepare him for that test. So in 1995, I partnered with David Sherrington. You remember the university professor who introduced me to HR certification in the first place to create HRCP. It's a company that's dedicated to helping people prepare for their HR certification exams. Over the past 25 years, tens of thousands of people have used our materials to study for and pass their exams. We partner with a lot of colleges and universities and other organizations who provide courses and they use our materials with their students. Troy will now talk about how offering HR certification prep courses can benefit your organization. And Troy, you may be on mute, I'm not sure. Well, I had my headset on, but I guess it wasn't working. So, Mel, can you hear me? We can hear you, <laughs> sir, and thank you. What's that? Can you hear me better now? Yes, Troy, we can hear you now. You can hear me? Okay. Okay, so um, my name is Troy Weiler. I've been with HRCP for about three years. Let's go back one slide. There we go. Um, and I would be your initial contact along with Kelly from ProTrain. Uh, we usually do a joint call for introductions uh, to go over the HRCP programs. Some of the benefits of offering an HRCP um, ProTrain course is that it creates a new revenue stream for you. Those of you that are, are new to using a third party vendor. Um, may not be familiar with how all of this works, and Betty will cover that towards the end of the program, but it's a, a great way to kick off a new revenue stream and support uh, businesses in your professional communities um, to both create awareness of your programs and especially in, in our interest would be the HR program. It also really helps to elevate the HR profession um, with another base of knowledge of information for both the students and, and the companies that they work for. And then it, it gives you the opportunity to increase your continuing education, your professional education, and your online educational offerings at the organization, uh, college, school, university that, uh, that you currently work for and with. Next slide. So why offer HR certification preparation courses? Uh, again, uh, other than what we've already mentioned, it enhances your business programs. Um, they're highly sought after certifications. And when I say it enhances your business programs, we have, depending on the course, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about in detail about the, the three different offerings with ProTrain, but we have schools that offer it as an entry level course uh, for the APHR, for somebody that's just looking to get into HR that maybe doesn't have much of a background or much of an education. And the PHR and the SPHR, which Laura mentioned, um, they're usually taught in the same class. 
but this can um, be used as a capstone class. We've seen it used as a capstone class for business degrees and, um, and or master's program with the SPHR. So there are different ways of looking at it. Um, sometimes they're used as part of a continuing education program. So it just really depends on where it would fit with your organization, your college or university. Um, the certifications are highly sought after, mostly for the reasons that, that Laura has mentioned. I know sometimes when people are looking for a position, especially right now, given COVID and the current economy, um, having a certification on your resume can put you at the top of the stack. Um, also, there are 6 million human resources professionals in the United States. Uh, Laura mentioned as part of her presentation that about um, 500,000 people have become certified. So there's a, there's a very large market out there um, of potential students for, for you to resource or have access to. Um, in fact, talking to that same point, the projected growth is another 9% by 2024 um, in human resource professional growth. So you can see that there are opportunities there to grow your portfolio of, portfolio of school offerings. So about 135,000 people currently hold an HR certification with HRCI. Um, so again, you can see that where the opportunities are there. Next slide. So some of the benefits of certification for the PHR, SPR, HR certified HR professionals, they're more likely than non-certified professionals to get hired, uh, to be full-time employed to be compensated well, to be happier with their career. They tend to perform better on the job. They show greater potential for future positions at, at a company in the way of advancement. And they perform better, better on strategic a HR efforts, as well as uh, offering a greater HR expertise uh, to their employer. If we can continue on with the next slide. HR certified professionals report reported significantly higher compensation than those without HRCI certification. So as you can see here, the SPHR shows almost a $20,000 increase versus their non-accredited peers in income, in annual income. And the PHR is about $5,000 on average higher than their non-certified peers. So that's a big incentive as well for your students that would be looking to take the course. And continuing with the next slide. HR, uh, certified HR professionals were less likely to report being unemployed or underemployed than non-certified professionals. For example, 90% of PHR, the professional human resources certified employees are full-time. The 87% of the senior professional and human resources find themselves employed first full-time versus the 69% of their non-certified uh, peers finding themselves employed full-time. Next slide. So uh, HR certified, certified HR professionals reported greater income growth over time and higher career satisfaction as well. So obviously you wanna be satisfied with your career. Um, you want to be comfortable with your incomes. And so becoming certified is another vehicle to help make those things happen. Next slide. So two thirds of supervisors of HR professionals surveyed said that their organizations prefers to hire HRCI certified professionals for at least some positions. We have a little pie chart for you there just to give you the, I guess, the two thirds reference, but uh, it's just a, an interesting little statistic, which also would drive people towards the certification. Next slide. One in five supervisors said that their organization requires certification by HRCI for some or all positions. Probably a little less prevalent for the APHR. I think that's about five years old now. Laura or Terry can correct me if I'm wrong. The PHR and SPHR as well. Um, I actually did a kind of a my own strategic phone call survey. I went to some of the major markets that are out there and made phone calls to see, you know, calling on um, positions that were available and asked about some of these things. And it, it, it really is on the money. So one in five said the organization requires it. A lot of them prefer it, but don't have it as a requirement. And it really does help them as they're looking for work or looking to change companies uh, to be considered at a, at a stronger scrutiny than maybe their, their competition on the resume. Next slide. So the HRCI certifications are accredited by NCCA, the National Commission for Certifying Agencies. So that just goes to show 
um, that uh, well, and and this certification has been around for I believe almost 40 years now, or a little over. Um, so it is an accredited certification um, that uh, we're preparing them for. And then certification courses that are offered with ProTrain, uh, the APHR, which is the Associate Professional in Human Resources, the PHR, which is the Professional Human Resources, and the SPHR, Senior Professional in Human Resources. The next slide will show you, um, if we can advance to that, um, that shows you some of the images of our brand new 2021 study materials. The APHR is the book on the far left. It's just one book. It's just under uh, a thousand pages of content. And then the other books are um, um, substantially larger in, in content information. The APHR is designed, well, I guess if we continue on, but, but the, uh, they have text, flashcards, practice exams. We have a print edition, which is hard copy, which is what you're seeing here. We have an online edition with an audio reader, or they can opt to purchase both, which is a print and online edition with audio reader. And that's really up to the student. I think ProTrain offers it as a print edition and then they can upgrade from there. And Betty can correct me if I'm wrong as she gets to her slides. If we go to the next slide. Troy, it's actually the other way around. The online- Oh, did I say it backwards? <laughs> they provide the online with the option to purchase the print edition. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Terry. Um, so which HR certification class would you want to offer with your organization? Um, well, a couple things to note is that the exams are primarily experience-based. The candidates must meet certain criteria in order to take exams. Those requirements are outlined in the following slides. The course certification is available with ProTrain, which I've already mentioned, but here it just notes a little bit more detail, which we'll cover in even more detail in the next slide. So APHR student requirements, they have to be 18 years of age. Um, they have to have a high school diploma or a global equivalent, um, GED, for example. Perfect program for recent college graduates, armed service men and women making a transition into civilian life, and professionals seeking a greater transition into the HR field. Next slide. PHR student requirements, they must meet one of the following requirements. They have to have a master's degree with a min minimum of one year experience as a human resources, um, in a human resources professional level um, job, or they can have a bachelor's degree with a minimum of two years of experience in a professional level HR um, position. And then less than a bachelor's degree is a minimum of four years of experience in a professional level HR position. And these are requirements um, determined by HRCI, Human Resources Certification Institute. They're the accrediting body. Then the next uh, slide is SPHR. Similar master's degree with four years of experience, uh, bachelor's degree with a minimum of five years of experience, or less than a bachelor's degree with a minimum of seven years of experience for the senior professional and human resources certification. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is where I'll turn things back over to Betty. do the presentation and talk at the same time, so forgive me. I did it again. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, you guys have been wonderful. You're wonderful to work with. You're wonderful to work with our students. And whether you're an existing partner of ProTrain or a potential partner of ProTrain, or if you just want to work with, you know, the human resources group uh, directly, that, that's okay. But um, we are getting so many people that are interested in learning about and using their training for the human resources group, uh, whether it be a military active duty, a military spouse, corporation, I mean, everybody right now during COVID, we're all trying to figure out how can we keep our job? How can we, you know, um, let's just say stay afloat. So the benefits of live online learning, we're, we're doing a great job. And many of our partners that we're working with, our school partners, we have about 250 online partners, or not online, but we have 250 school partners that offer 
uh, whether it be live online, self-paced, live online instructor led, and when we can go back to it, um, you know, live online in classroom. So we're 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 all in this together. I can assure you, no no nobody is. Nobody's got the secret sauce. We're all trying to do the best we can, but we've been doing really good this year offering the live online instructor led. So our students in the class from anywhere, we have instructors that are subject matter experts and we offer the classes, whether it be whatever you want, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, whether you want it Saturday, do you want some of it during the day? It's whatever you think the clientele in your service area will um, like. And it's whether it's WIOA, whether it's corporate, whether it's um, military spouse, whether it's active duty, because we're serving all of those people with you as our clients and potential clients that might be listening to us. And the human resources is one of the most sought after uh, certifications that people are looking for today. And that's why we wanted to have our great friends on from HRCP today on to tell you about it. Because if you're wanting to keep your unit, your division, your company, um, if you want to keep your HR people online and you want to offer these classes, this is the way to do it because we are getting tons of requests for this. And I just wanted to reach out. Um, with HRCP to let you all know they're a wonderful company. Um, and we're offering a lot of classes and we're very affordable for the students. Um, uh, quite frankly, offering the online self-paced and the um, online live synchronous training. There's no travel time for the student. Uh, they don't have to pay, they don't have to pay a babysitter, they don't have to pay gas. You know, there's lots of things they don't have to pay for, but they can take the class from their home, saves time and money, and it accommodates their their um, busy schedule. As I'm quite sure that everybody that's listening to this webinar has the same issues that our students do. We're just trying to figure it out. Um, our, in, our instructors are right there, just, just as if it was an instructor in classroom real time. We have an instructor that's real time, that's live online and takes care of the student. There's no difference. Um, we One thing that is great is we record our sessions. Whereas if uh, you have a student that's going to in classroom and they're asking questions, but it's not recorded, they may or may not remember it, but all of our sessions are recorded so the student can go back and review it and then go back and ask the instructor any questions that they would like as a refresher. I feel that's a very huge benefit to our students because once it's gone, it's gone. And But with, with ours, you still have the recording. Students attend the live online course from anywhere, their home, their work, it doesn't matter. They can, they can attend from anywhere, uh, but they we must make sure that not only our instructors, but also our students have reliable internet connection. I mean, you, you, may have, you may have some of those special students say, I can't hear it. Well, it's because you don't have reliable internet connection. So we do go through those internet tests with our students and making sure that they take a self test at no charge to them to see what their internet connection is like. We do the same thing with our instructors. I already talked about there's no travel time, it saves time, it saves money. It saves, uh, it just accommodates everybody's lifestyle because we're all going through, we're all going through this time together and we're trying to make it as easy as possible for everybody. Our school partners, 
our corporate partners, our instructors, our in, uh, uh, and I mean, just everybody, everybody's going through this together. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible. We're trying to give personalized instructor training in a one-on-one -on -one atmosphere. Even though it's um, a lot of our training now is live online, instructor-led, we still take the time to talk to the student one-on-one. -on -one. As I already said, sessions are recorded. You can review them at any point you want. If you are sick, your baby is sick, whoever's sick, you can still go back and record the session or, or re review the session and talk to the instructor after the fact. Uh, we're not saying that you can miss every session because that's just not acceptable, but we're trying to make accommodations for people and their lifestyle. Um, how are the live online programs conducted? Well, once a student talks to us and we talk to them about what are the prerequisites for the program and they decide they want to take it, then when they sign up, we give them their welcome email to business days prior to being signed up. So that way they can go in, test it out, make sure that they're good to go. Um, they have their class schedule. We give them the student handbook. Student handbook, actually, there's still rules and regulations of, even if you were in person, there's rules for students to be able to take classes. There's still rules for students to take classes if it is live online synchronous. We explain to them how to use the Zoom platform. We explain to them that there will be quizzes, a midterm and a final, just like in classroom. There's nothing different. And we provide to them all of the online resources that we have for them uh, to be able to be successful in their class. All of this is provided to them and explained to them. Um, with the human resources um, exam is scheduled by the students. They actually reach out to HRCP directly. Troy, did I misrepresent that? Because I believe that they actually reach out to you after they take the class. Troy, you may be on mute. I can jump in and answer that question. Okay. Um, once, an, once a student has completed a course and they're ready to take the certification exam, they actually need to schedule the exam with HRCI, which is the credentialing body. Okay. And, um, and we actually have that um, incorporated into our program um, but we work, and my point is, just like with other certifying bodies, ProTrain works directly with the certifying body to make sure that we take care of the student. And um, when we work with our school partners, I want you also to know we're going to take care of that student for their exam. So what is a requirement for a student? We'd like them to be 18 years of age or older with a diploma or GED. Um, they need to provide us with an, e an email address that they're actually gonna look at. Because when we send them the welcome letter, we're gonna send them a welcome letter to the email address that they say that they're gonna look at. So that's what we, want the student to do. If you're taking it through your work, that's fine. If you're taking it through personal, that's fine. We need the student to have a laptop that has speakers and a microphone because you can't take an online live instructor-led class if you can't hear and if you can't talk. And then, you know, the basic um, operating systems and we do have the capability of sending a free of charge link 
that uh, about your internet connectivity that, you know, is it up to date or not? So we try to give this out to each and every potential student to make sure that we're setting them up for success because if we don't, if they sign up, they're not gonna be happy with the school. They're not gonna be happy with ProTrain. They're not gonna be happy with HRCP. So we wanna get this all up front taken care of so everybody knows what's expected. The um, HR management course uh, weaves together solid human resource principles, timely research and uh, uh, recent events. I'm just reading you stuff here. What we want you to know is if you are a school partner, or a potential student that's on this uh, webinar, that human resources is really in demand right now. And with ProTrain and HRCP and our current or potential school partners, we have the class for you reasonably priced, extremely reasonably priced. Our next class does start on January 25th, and it is, uh, 7 to 10, 10 p.m. on Mondays, 6 to 9 Central, 4 to 7 Pacific, uh, 7 to 10 Eastern. But this is one of this is one of the most popular programs that we have uh, right now because just imagine in COVID, you got a company and you got employees, and employees are frustrated companies are flustered, if you will, and you need somebody in the HR arena to be able to take care of the questions that employees have. Because we want our employees to stay, but there's questions and nobody's an expert on everything. So um, human resources professionals are invaluable at this point in time especially during COVID. So this is going to be a great program for your students or if you're a potential student on this webinar to take because not everybody has the exact answer. And I'm saying that from personal experience. I don't. I literally have a human resources person on retainer because I don't know the right answers to everything. So I would highly encourage you if you're a school to offer the program. I would highly encourage you if you're a potential student to take the program because companies need someone that has this knowledge because we, we are not all experts in everything. And this is the very last slide. And for myself, I want to tell you how grateful I am to be partnered with HRCP. I truly am, because we're partnered with many certifying exam bodies. And as an organization, we offer that to our school partners. We have about 250. But I or my employees don't know everything. So that's why we partner with great people like Laura. And Laura, I'm going to turn it over to you to wrap it up now, ma'am. Thank you, Betty. Uh, we've uh, appreciated the, this opportunity to be here with you today, and uh, we would be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I see that there are a couple of questions um, that have been typed into the Q&A, and uh, the, the first one's already been answered, but we can uh, address that as well. The, someone asked, what is the difference between SHRM and HRCI certifications? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Terry has written an excellent answer to that. They're essentially competing certifications, although many human resource professionals carry both certifications. They'll study once and take two exams. It's very efficient. Uh, HRCI has been around for a long time, more than 40 years. They've been uh, certifying HR professionals. Um, they, the HRCI was actually started by SHRM as an independent entity. And then a number of years ago, SHRM decided that they wanted to do their own thing. 
And so they've had their certification for about five years. Uh, uh, it remains to be seen which of those certifications will uh, persist in being recognized, but uh, at, at this point, um, we can tell you that, uh, that they cover essentially the same content. We have uh, taken the exams from both organizations. They're extremely similar. And, um, and this is something I always say, and you can quote me, HR is HR is HR. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the initials are at the end of your name. Uh, th these these two certifications are are essentially the same thing, um, and our materials are adequate for preparing people for either of those exams. Uh, let's see. Um, another question that came up: what, what are the exam windows for HRC certification exams? Uh, they used to have just a, a two month window twice a year the, in which you could take the exams, but now they can be taken any time um, there uh, with the beginning of COVID, they put the 